Hello everyone, the Panda Photographer here, and I just want to conversate with you why I want to switch from Sony to Fuji. Now, if you're a photographer that's known me for the last five years, in the last two years I've been saying that I want to switch to another camera manufacturer. But within the last year, I said I was wanted to switch over to Fuji. And here's my reasons why. They finally have a camera that suits everything that I want in a crop sensor camera. Now, some of you guys might not like the whole idea of switching from Sony to Fuji. But for me, and from what my needs are, here's my reasons why I want to switch to Fuji. And and my reasons why I want to leave Sony. No, I'm not a Sony uh, fanboy and I'm not a Sony shooter to partic Well, yes, I am a Sony shooter, but I'm not a Sony like diehard fan. Okay, I've been shooting with the A mount for a long time now. Before that, Nikon and Canon, and before that, Canon, and before that, Minota. But here's my here's my issue with shooting with Sony. Now, some of you may have different experience with Sony. If you're an A-mount user, I'm talking to you A-mount users that have used A-mount that converted over to E-mount, maybe you will understand. How many times that we A-mount shooters, photographers that shoot with Sony A-mount have asked Sony to improve on certain things with the A-mount system? And they did. The A99 was a good start, but they still left the limitations in video at f3.5 when shooting autofocus. These are one of the problems that I cannot deal with Sony where it doesn't want to listen to its consumers, its customers, its user base. And as a photographer that's been shooting off and on since I was 12 years old, I have to say that I'm kind of discouraged uh, how Sony approaches the A mount system now. They, they it seems like their tent and focus is only E mount, and you don't hear nobody talking about the A ninety nine Mark II, which is an amazing camera, by the way. But as the panel photographer that's shooting with Sony currently, I feel like it kind of bores me sometimes. In reality, it it does. It's like okay, I already know the system from the back of my head. I know the system from. The whole layout system. I know how to work the A mount system entirely. You give me a new freaking A mount camera, I can figure the shit out within 24 hours. It's like I fix it when they when they do I fix tutorials on new phones that not even release. What they do is like they go to Australia, buy the phone 24 hours ahead. With, with the, what they what they did with the last iPhone 10. This is like the concept. That's just me. They they do the 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 teardown and the teardown is the most important part about teardown down uh, uh, technology. But if you watch iFixit uh, teardowns, it's really popular. A lot of people watch. Millions of people want to know what's in the what's in their devices. So they are known for tearing down things. It's just like them. That's just me. I tear it down. And I get bored. And my problem is now is that I am super fucking bored of Sony's. Yeah, 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 I get it, I get it. I'm reading all these articles, I'm reading all the instructions, I'm reading all the manuals online on the A9, the A A7R3. I'm reading all these instruction manuals, how to like program if I ever get my hands on one so I know off the bat what to do. And here's my, here's my dilemma, right? My problem is is that Fuji just released the X-H1. Now, uh, no one's really talking about the video features that this camera has to offer, and I slightly talked about it, but I didn't talk about all of it, and it has a lot of video features. Now, I do have to say that I am very uh, intrigued by how Fuji put all these uh, technology features inside the inside the F Fuji X uh, X X H one, and I'm really happy they actually did it for the crop sensor because 
Sony has did it for A6300 and A6500, but they didn't really do much to the video features. But Fuji stacked on so much video features in the X-H1, which I have to say, I'm super fucking impressed. Uh, I'm so impressed that I'm looking forward into switching. And the reason why I also want to switch is because this is what a camera should, a crop sensor camera should be. Yes, the, 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 the manual exposure compensation dial is not there. They do have a button for it, but still, it's there. Yes, you can shoot an F-Log, which is uh, internally, finally, because on the X, uh, on the X, uh, X-T2, you can shoot it uh, externally. But this time you can do internally, which is great. What I, I really want to know is that if I switch over to Fuji, is Fuji going to become one of those manufacturers that is going to just pull out this camera and not do the same to the rest and upgrade the features over time? Because in firmware, things need to be improved. But I have to say, like, I, I'm. I'm following Fuji for quite some time I'm very impressed I'm seeing step by steps they're not trying to do as much mistakes as Sony did I'm not trying to compare the two but I'm just going to try to compare my experience with Sony and what I think would be my experience with Fuji and uh and I think my my experience with Fuji would be a much better experience because at least Fuji fucking listens to their customers when it comes down to a certain amount and this is why another reason why I want to stick with Fuji is because the thing is that they don't try to like confuse the customers or the shooters say hey you need this for video and you need this for photography okay they let you know that we only want to focus on the crop sensor factor for a reason if you're gonna focus on a crop sensor we don't focus on all of them they still updating cameras from like five years ago with firmware updates Sony doesn't really do that for me and Sony needs to fix a lot of shit with the A77 Mark II and the A99 Mark II but they refuse to do it they refuse to listen but I'm not bashing Sony I'm not bashing Sony photographers this is my this is my fucking experience with dealing with the Sony brand and shooting with the email I had a fun time but there were some limitations that I feel like Sony and do and still are doing even now they they want you to pay so much money when they can put those features in the a9 into the a90 the a7 the a7s the a7s2 the a7 the a7r2 they could have done that but no 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 they want you to pay for all these features and all this technology when they could have done that already but every year somebody wants to release a new camera and i feel like they just they push too many cameras too fast and I feel like for me someone's gonna run out of ideas somebody's gonna run out of ideas and they watch how somebody's gonna spread out their ideas now they're gonna be like okay we running out of ideas we need to pace ourselves we need to we needed to re evaluate I say that wrong but I apologize we evaluate how we put new technology in the newest camera we need to like hold off so let's release a camera every two years instead of every one year and then you see the trend right i feel like that's how sony should approach it but i feel like sony's going a little bit too fast and for me as dealing with sony and reading all about sony because every single article in photography is about sony 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 but you see every article about nikon canon Fuji, 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 Canon, Nikon. Oh, Canon's coming up with this new camera. Okay, I was excited for the 60 Mark II. Hopefully it would have 4K, but I was disappointed. So I moved on. So this is just my thoughts. This is just my opinion on the, on the problems and the experience as a, as a photographer and as a video shooter that I'm looking to switch over to Fuji at some point, not with this in the year of having financial difficulties as, as we speak but if I was able to get a X-H1 
at in decent lens, like at 18 to 35. I wish I could mount my Sigma onto that camera, which I'm 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 I'm, I'm fairly disappointed that I won't be able to because I don't think they even make adapters for it. And if they do make adapters, I lose all aperture uh, capabilities on trying to control the apertures. So. And I don't want to use manual adapters. I really want to neutralize the Sigma 18-35 f1.8 because it's a really good crop sensor lens for a crop sensor body. So, but I do want to stress enough that if there is an adapter out there that can mount on the Sigma 18-35 in general, either on the Canon side or the Nikon side or even on the Sony side, I'd be really happy to neutralize it uh but until then i won't be able to but is fuji going to be best for you or for me i think fuji's is taking the right step they slowing down they taking their paces they really are focused on not just on the photographer side but on the video side this camera has so many video features it's insane so many that i haven't talked about You'd be impressed once you dive into the menu sentence. You'd be impressed. They even have a DB level on the audio. What camera has a DB level audio when you can adjust the DB compression inside the camera? What? That's insane. That's crazy. I've never seen any camera that has that kind of feature unless I'm using a cinema lens. I mean, a cinema camera like the Sony FX5 or. Uh, epic red but this is a camera that has those features that a five thousand eight thousand dollar camera has and for ninety hundred dollars i'm definitely sold i'm sold on it but this is just my opinions everyone I, i'm not trying to say hey go with fuji no 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 i'm just telling you why i'm going to be switching this is why and this is what i've been waiting for a camera that fits me not just as a photographer but as a videographer it has everything i want but even more and those features alone the time code shoot and then uh, dci 24 frames if i want to shoot a cinema film if i wanted to uh i can do that and not only that it has anti-flickering to shoot in 4k 30 frames per second at 200 megabits per second and you can change it too you can change it from 24 to 100 megabits per second if you wanted to. Yes, in the dive menu, you can change all of those settings in the Fuji, which I'm impressed. And I'm very happy to see those uh, those settings and those features inside a camera. And that's a lot to take in, but it's a lot that I've been looking forward to in a crop sensor camera or in a full frame camera. But it had to be a crop sensor. And I think crop sensors are the way to go and I don't have to worry about uh, nesting my footage if you guys don't know about nesting that is basically you take a a crop sensor footage and you nest it to match the footage say I'm gonna shoot 1920 by 1080 and I have to uh, if I have to uh, nest it into 4k by shooting, shooting in 4k at 30 frames per second I have to go into Adobe Premiere and nest it and then stabilize it that way sometimes I have to do that but I don't want to do that anymore it's a pain and that's a pain with Sony is that when you shoot in 1080, 1080p and you want to nest it but it's a whole new, different category in videography because my camera doesn't shoot 4k I put everything and upscale it to 4k but even with the A6300, A6500 and shooting in 4K, you still needed a external with the 6300 and with the 6500 you can shoot in internal but you have a certain limitation on it. But here's my catch is that I know the camera does not have a, a headphone jack on the body but if I buy the grip together with the two batteries that come with it, it will have a headphone jack so I can listen to the audio which is perfect but uh, other than that I'm, I'm pleased with the capabilities of this camera what this camera has to offer and if I was 
a video shooter i think this is the camera i would want to shoot cinematography work documentaries with uh youtube youtube content relogging finally i can have a camera to relog and use the autofocus and walk around with my stabilizer or tripod with the sony a77 or a77 mark ii i can't really do that and then with the e-mount you have to invest in new lenses so I'm going to have to invest in new lenses with this with the Fuji I I'm aware of that I'm pretty much aware of that but at least that I know that I can rely on the autofocus system because it's gotten much 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 better even though it was better before but Fuji went out their way and made it much much better and reading the the reports and reading some of the the reviews and reading the the manual instructions online yeah i've been reading that quite a bit i'm i'm super super excited for this camera and i'm super super anxious to just get my hands on it and just love it and just sleep with it like a girlfriend but not saying anything sexual with the camera i'm just saying that you know, I can make a love love time for a long time with this camera. And the X-H1 does a really good job at everything. It, look, it looks like, and it will, I'm telling you that from what I'm reading, what it, it, it's able to do, it's going to do a good job in the photography spectrum and the videography spectrum. So videographers and photographers, YouTubers, it's going to be a blast with this camera. Now, take this with a grain of salt. Yes, Fuji could improve the batteries. Yes, they could have improved the batteries. Yes, it comes with the same batteries as the X-T2. And they're not so great. They like Sony batteries. Yes, someone, Michael pointed that out in the, in the message in the last video. Yeah, they could have, they could have, uh, they could have just improved it, but why make new batteries when you can neutralize it and use the same batteries? I can understand what Fuji is coming from in that point, uh, but Sony batteries were far worse than Fuji's. I'm sorry, Sony batteries were far worse. When I had the email, I had no choice to buy the grab. That's the problem. With the Fuji, from a lot of people's experience and what I read online, it's like, it's not that bad. It's not as bad as Sony's, which I find that to be true. Not as bad as Sony's, but Sony's are really terrible. Those e mount batteries were horrible. And the A9's battery, the Z batteries, that should have been the battery for all those e mount cameras entirely. Sony knew they were making a new battery, but they hesitated for some weird reason. I don't know why they hesitated to make the Z batteries such a late. And I guess they wanted to wait for the new high end camera, which is the A9 which is a rebranding of the Minota A9. <sighs> Wait, didn't Minota do that with the batteries on that camera too? Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> it's, it's, to me it's like, okay, just take Minota shit and rebrand it and do some new technology. That's it, that's what Sony's doing. And like I said, got nothing against Sony. I just got something against how they don't really listen to aimout shooters anymore. They used to, to listen to A-mount shooters, but now they just like abandoned that department. Just give A-mount shooters the A99 Mark II and shut them up and like, but you didn't listen. We wanted you to lift the F3.5 limitations on video and autofocus. Oh, we can't do it to SLT. I think they were capable of doing it, but they didn't want to work on the technology for it just like fuji look at fuji they got a crop sensor camera think about it they have a crop sensor camera right there's no limitations on their autofocus lenses but it's it's a, it's a full yes it's different it's a full uh mirrorless camera but look at the other cameras you don't see any of the other cameras have limitations so why couldn't sony do it but Rumors said that the A7, A77 Mark III is supposed to be coming out soon, which I really doubt it. I really, really doubt that Sony is going to really focus their time on a new A-mount crop sensor camera for A-mount users. Because 
Tanron has a banner ship on, on A mount. Sigmund has a banner ship on A mount. The only manufacturers out there with manual lenses, by the way, is Samyang. Now you can find some Zeitz lenses for A mount out there, still circulated on the market. You can find Tamron lenses for A mount, uh, especially telephoto lenses. But the only manufacturer that is making A mount lenses right now is Samyang. Kudos to Sang Yang, by the way. Very good optics. But this is why I'm moving from Sony to Fuji. Main reason why. Because I can buy me some Sang Yang optics that, that they make Fuji glass for. I think they do make Fuji. I can double check that. But at least I can. I believe I can mount on Panasonic lenses onto the Fuji mount so pretty sure that that's my only option there but as a Sony user I'm, I'm really stumped and I forgot to check the comments Fuji solid good luck I hope it's it's all you want it so Michael says that Fuji is solid good luck I hope it's all you want it it is what I wanted. I've been wanting a camera like this for a long time. For the last three and a half years, I've been wanting a camera like this to have a beautiful display. By the way, uh, even though they it could have, I don't know, maybe they could have done something with the compensation down. But there is a compensation button right there. So. In theory, it's not really gone. It's still there, the compensation there, but it's not as the dial. Yes, I understand a lot of shooters. If you shot with film and you shot with the dials, yes, those dials come in handy and they are a big, big plus. But I gotta get my, I gotta get my money game up because I really want one. So right now, I am selling my Sony A77, which has. Uh, an LCD screen that is not broken the cable snapped now if you watch a video that I made by about that cable all you have to do is send it to Sony to fix it you can probably send it to any repair store to get it fixed but I'm selling the Sigma 18 and 35 f1.8 because it is the A mount I'm selling the Tamron SP90 mil micro lens I'm selling the whole Godox flash systems Anything that has to do with the A-mount. I'm even selling the wireless remote trigger that I have for it. Getting rid of it. All of it. Getting rid of all of it. Just to get the Fuji. Because I want the Fuji. I don't care if it's just me just shooting natural light for quite some time. I just want that camera. I want to do a lot of video work with that camera. And for you A-mount shooters, I'm not abandoning you. I will still provide information and guides and tutorials how to shoot video with a mount with the limitations with manual shooting and this and by the way for you a mount shooters there is always a way to shoot vlogging at f3.5 because think about it how many video loggers out there are actually shooting at f1.8 vlogging no 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 there are people out there that are shooting f2.8 3.5 f4 video logging because why it's perfect settings for daylight indoor you can adjust iso based on uh your lighting condition but i digress dependent photographer here everyone if you want to support but hit that subscribe button hit the like button if you didn't like it hit the down button I don't care it's my opinion it's my experience if you have more experience than me shooting with the Sony then maybe you, your words could be valid but until then you haven't shot with the A-mount then don't say anything if you're an experienced videographer and photographer then I can listen to you but I'm sick of these photography snobs that have to always kind of put the untruthful facts about photography but anyway, find me on 606 Studios, Instagram, as the Panda Photographer, all my words. And if you want to support what I do, you can hit the PayPal donation link right in the description below. And if you want to pre-order that Fuji X-H1, I left the link down in the description below. My gift to you. 
go pick it up. Don't be afraid to pick it up. But with that said, eat, sleep, photography, repeat. See you guys in the next one.